Welcome yet again, ladies and gentlemen, to another status report highlight, this time for the 25th of September 2018. We've got some very good information for you this week, so stay tuned, including experimental beta branch, oh that's right, I said beta, or beta, which will include vehicles and base building. So let's kick things straight off with lead producer Eugen. And I quote, While there have been some serious delays with the delivery of the first content batch, the work on the internal version of the game has not stopped. This basically means one thing, the next patch arriving to the stress test branch will be considered an experimental beta and will contain new content and features, including vehicles and base building. We will offer a detailed list of the beta package later on, and the list for features and content is not exactly short, so we'll need to make sure everything works. The process for the publishing of this patch will start with stress tests focusing on the new content. Currently, we are quite happy about the stability of the internal client and server, and most of the team is focusing on bug fixing. More information on the release will be shared through our official channels. I can't wait for you guys to drive around Chernerus with your friends. Once this patch hits the experimental branch of the game, it will again be made available with both server and client and pushed to the Xbox as fast as possible. Now let's move swiftly on to lead programmer Mirik, who starts by saying, Currently, when playing any animations, the whole skeleton is evaluated every single bone, no matter how far away from the camera the other entities are. Our new system will improve the client and server performance significantly, especially server side. Instead of evaluating almost 200 bones, we now only need about 20 or even less to be evaluated on the server side. The evaluation of the entire skeleton currently takes about 75% of the AI's simulation time, so we believe this optimization will help to increase AI numbers significantly. As for vehicle physics, the gearbox clutch simulation and tire friction still need some tweaking, because vehicles still have issues with riding up hills. Vehicle animations and camera. We improved the third-person camera and added more character animations. This includes handling the clutch, brake and thrust pedals, aka accelerator. Vehicles networking. We have reworked the networking logic for four-wheeled vehicle synchronization, and the same logic will work for future vehicles. The next step is network traffic optimizations. Input system. We had to rework the input system a bit, due to requirements to simply add new actions, something the modders among you will appreciate. Currently, the new system is in testing. Adding the key binding options will be the next step. Now let's move on to lead animator, Victor, who says... Last week we had a small motion capture session, this mainly dedicated to a capture of various missing animations for player character or minor fixes to existing animations. Meanwhile, we were also focusing on bug fixing and polishing of the player actions, vehicle related animations and item poses. The vehicles now have many advanced animations like switching the lights off and on, using pedals and shifting gears and of course steering. There are many new things and improvements done on the player animation graph side. One example to speak of all, just recently we have reworked aiming with the flashlight, torch and other items. This was always not very convenient to use because the light was not going in the right direction. From now on though, it works just great. The light beam now aims where you are looking, no matter if the character is standing or moving, so the flashlight should be your best friend from now on in dark areas. We have also added a small detail in the form of an animation for switching the flashlight off and on. Of course, while Victor there mentions a small detail, all of these small details do add up to make a great experience. So far, already with what's been added, I feel more immersed than ever before in DayZ. And it's only gonna get better, boys and girls. <clears throat> Let's move on to sound designer Philip, who mentions the entire audio team is continuing the work on the overall audio appeal of DayZ, and they're doing a great job. And we've created a range of new and updated game sounds, so let's have a look. New rain sounds for tarmac, tile, and wooden roof surfaces. Updated the rain sounds for trees and bushes, Updated the leaves rustling sounds for bushes. New sounds for the empty vessel and pour liquid action, pouring water onto the ground or into another vessel. Sounds for jumping and landing animation. New sounds for various items for pick into hands action. New sounds for carrying weapons on your shoulder. Infected play different footsteps, bare feet, sneakers, boots, according to what they are wearing. New sounds for eating fruit, cereals and taking pills. And that is all for this week's status report highlight for the 25th of September 2018. I tried to make it nice and quick for you as this is a highlight and don't forget, 
The Community Spotlight now has its own dedicated page for all its community goodness. So go and check it out because there's somebody on there you might know. I don't know who it is though. Go and check it out. Links can be found in the description below. Don't forget to read the reports in full yourselves. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Tickle my bell. And I'll see you peeps next time. Oh, hi there. Fancy seeing you here. I don't just make Daisy status report videos. I do loads of other stuff too. So why not check those out and discuss what you see in the comment section below. Are you still here?